Ahoy mates! Welcome on board the Disney Fantasy, one of Disney Cruise Line's fabulous ships. We are here for a seven night, very merry time sailing into the large tree behind me. But for today's video, we wanna give you a full and complete ship tour, show you every single venue that we can, go bottom to top, deck by deck, and take it all in. Now, if you're interested in some of the smaller details or seeing some of the fun offerings on board, I encourage you to check out our daily vlogs and other videos in our Disney Fantasy playlist. You can find that on our channel. But for now, let's go ahead and get our tour started for some navigational tips, then we'll head down to deck one and we'll take it deck by deck all the way to the top. The tour of the Disney Fantasy starts now. So the first thing I want to point out is this overlay of the ship will help help us keep it oriented as we go along. And I think the most important thing to take away here is that the Disney Fantasy has three sets of elevators slash stairs where a lot of cruise ships only have two. Now they do go up to different levels. So if we go here to the aft, we see one set of elevators only goes up to 12. The other one goes up to 13. If we come to midship, we'll see that one here only goes up to 11. This one goes up to 12. This one goes up, those are the stairs, they go up to 13, that's a separate area. And then there's an elevator up to the outlook area, which is technically on 14. And then we see the forward elevators. This one only goes to 12, this one goes up to 13. So different ones that you might need depending on where you're going. That's gonna help us keep oriented. Now, one other quick tip before we get started. Let's head by a stateroom area. Okay, so here in one of the stateroom halls, and what I wanted to point out is, when you look at the carpet, you'll see this kind of map with a bit of a compass rose. It doesn't actually have the directions pointed on it, but the map is true to the ship. So north would be forward, south would be aft, left or west would be port, and right or east would be starboard. So if you're trying to figure out if you're going front or back, just look at the map and it's all along the hallway. You see there's one, there's one, it just keeps going. Now there's another way to help tell as well, which is gonna be these little placards that have the room numbers. If you see a fish, you're on port side. And the way you know that is fish has four letters, port has four letters. Let's go check the starboard side. The room placard here, and it's a seahorse, which begins with the letter S, starboard S, seahorse S. And I think sometimes they can vary. It might be like a starfish or something like that, but in general, that'll help give you directions. Okay, now that we have all of that under our belt, let's go ahead and start the deck tours. Let's head down to deck number one. So we arrive to our first deck, deck number one, and we see the map tells us we are here. And as we can see, the only thing on deck one are these embarkation or debarkation uh, areas for when you're in port. And then one other thing is the health center. So we can see, the other good thing is any, they do have these signs on every deck that tell you where things are. So this says port side, health center, and there's also the sign here, health center. So we head to the port side, follow the signs that say health center. Super easy to find. And here it is. It's currently closed. That's okay, we wouldn't go in anyways. We wanna be respectful of anyone who might be going in there. Hopefully you don't need the health center during your cruise, but if you do, this is where you will find it. And that's it for deck number one. Let's head up to deck two. Deck two is where we find ourselves now and there's not too much to show here. A couple staterooms and then two small things and then Enchanted Garden, which is a restaurant. So we're here at the midship elevators and stairs. That's where we wanna come to access these things on deck two. And so the first thing is going to be the Vista Gallery, which just means they have some artwork up on the walls here and you can actually purchase this they have the prices put right there the artist's name the the title of the artwork itself and that continues on down the wall here you see the sign vista gallery visit sea treasures on deck three forward for more information on purchasing and shipping artwork as well as discover other disney inspired art so there you go we'll see that in just a little bit one other thing i wanted to point out right here is this is the midship detective agency this is like an interactive fun game anyone can play you come up sanitize your hands grab a pencil grab a map and take an interactive card touch the screen it'll give you the instructions you go around the ship playing with the interactive art on board solving a mystery it's really cool and as the uh, sign here says our other office is located on deck five midship so we will see that in just a bit as well but you do have this location here on deck two now past that we'll turn see the lovely christmas tree <laughs> 
we'll see lots of those and we'll find enchanted garden so the enchanted garden is currently closed but we have dined here multiple nights of our sailing so it is a as the name would suggest it's a garden inspired themed restaurant and it's enchanted so as day turns to night inside the restaurant the flowers will come alive they'll bloom colors change there's things happening inside there's a really nice fountain with some you know with water and, and things like that it's it's a really cool place it's a really relaxing place and we like it a lot wanted to point out there is stroller and ecv parking right outside of the restaurant here so that's super handy and another thing outside of the restaurant outside of all the restaurants you will find the menu posted either for breakfast which is what it's showing right now or that you know once breakfast is done it will be that evening's uh, dinner menu up on deck three now i've come to the forward part of deck three as you can see there just to kind of help us instead of starting in the middle and having to go both ways i figured we could start the front and work our way back so here we are as the sign says so we're gonna go around we're at the forward elevators or stairs we'll come around here and we will see the main entrance to the lower level of the Walt Disney Theater. Now this is available on the starboard side where we are right now, as well as on the port side. It's basically a mirror image there. And the other thing to point out here is Preludes, which is where you can get snacks and drinks uh, before, the, before the show starts, usually as an additional cost, popcorn, candy, things you would find at a theater, right? Um, unfortunately, Preludes has not been available for this sailing, and I think that's due to COVID protocols because you do need to wear your mask inside the theater currently. So don't, I think they don't want people eating and drinking inside. As you can see, the theater is currently closed, but we have seen some lovely shows inside the theater, multiple nights of our sailing, including Aladdin, Frozen, and Believe. So show you a little bit of what the theater looks like right now. Very beautiful theater, very regal, and it is two stories one last thing to point out here is they do have these uh display boards on both sides once again that will show what's playing today in the theater the different times it gives the artwork for that night's show and then this is actually the schedule for the entire sailing so again mirror image here on starboard and port you can enter the theater there or visit preludes when it is open now let's head back. We're gonna start walking towards midship here. And we're gonna enter like this shopping area of the ship, at least one shopping area. First thing we see is Crown of Light by Diamonds International, as the name would suggest. This is a jewelry store. Watches, rings, necklaces, that sort of thing. Love, love this. Nice picture of Walt there for the Walt Disney Theater, of course. As we come around, you'll see that this is what I was talking about, the mirror image go inside the theater preludes on the left now next to that we will find mickey's main sale another merchandise shop this has a lot of clothes like t-shirts spear jerseys bags but you can find other things too like magnets keychains toys suitcases and then here in the middle we will find sea treasures this is a lot of other disney merchandise same kind of thing that we just saw in mickey's main sale but most if not all of this is going to be cruise line themed so everything's gonna be nautical or have the cruise line logo on it. So you can get all sorts of things in there, ornaments, books, mugs, cups, lanyards, all sorts of fun stuff. We'll walk back and this is Mickey's main sale. It just continues on here, multiple entrances. Did wanna point out that they do have this uh, display board here with the merchandise operating hours for each of the shops, not just in this area, but throughout the whole vessel and you can enter sea treasures here as well or on the other side so that is going to do it for the shopping area here on the port side let's head through on the starboard side one last thing to show over there and this is the last store um forgive me i always forget how to pronounce the name bulgari or something like that um, but that's what they have inside this little section and then that is the last store on the starboard side and the last store in this area in general now let's head midship and check out the atrium so as we head into the atrium area first thing we'll see is the midship elevators and stairs right through there do have some seating here and then across is guest services of course this is where you'll come if you have any questions any issues any problems anything at all come to guest services they'll take care of you right there let's cut through the midship elevators and stairs because i did want to show bon voyage 
again if we come through here that's where we just were with the shopping and goes through to the theater here we have bon voyage this is a bar and it's this is the area we're about to show is where you enter the ship when your cruise begins you have the big welcome when you get on board so bon voyage right makes sense because this is where you're coming when your cruise is about to set sail so you have the bar seating there and then they do have additional comfortable seating across and now big reveal let's head in to the atrium which is absolutely stunning especially <laughs> right now for our very merry time sailing for our christmas tree all of our garland everything's decked out we have poinsettia plants everything is just wonderful of course it won't always be like this it's just like that right now for the very merry time sailing but the atrium will always be beautiful nonetheless so i wanted to point out here our uh, flagship statue for this vessel the fantasy is mademoiselle minnie mouse looking her finest right there and what you'll start to notice the theming of the atrium is peacock this is an art nouveau style you see the peacock feathers on the carpet on the floor if you look up in the elevator grates here, you might find some hidden Mickeys, but you'll also see a peacock through there. And then, of course, the lovely chandelier is peacock inspired as well. Absolutely stunning in this atrium. Three levels, so you can go all the way around here and see from all sides pretty much. And it's, it's really nice. You have these gold placards all throughout that have characters hidden in them, so lots of fine details to see inside the atrium here. Now just off the atrium and next to Bon Voyage, we will find a small seating area and then currently the very large gingerbread house. Yes, that is actual gingerbread and flour and sugar and icing and things like that. Super awesome. They got the lights and the decorations up on them. I don't recall what is here normally. I think it's just a seating area. I don't think there's anything too important here. That's why they put the gingerbread house there. But it's super cool for the very merry time sailing. I uh, just wanted to point out there might be, you know, special things here. They also do Halloween on the high seas and things like that. So you might find some really cool stuff in this area. Now just past Mademoiselle Minnie Mouse, we'll head up these little stairs here next to the piano. And we will see this. Lovely light piece there. I don't know if that's a chandelier or not, but we'll go with it. We find our main entrance to Royal Court. This is the second of three main rotation dining restaurants. And you see the carriage there on the door to enter. It is currently closed, but we did dine here several nights of our sailing as well. Turning away from the main entrance to Royal Court and leaving the atrium, did want to point out though, you could go down the stairs here down to deck two. Just wanted to show that we'll over come over here to the port side to these large porthole windows and we'll walk down this very long hallway we have something really cool at the end I'll show you one other thing in the middle first here's the other thing in the middle it is the second entrance to royal court ah, carriage on the doors there as well and the menu posted outside now Let's finish the long hallway. Now we've arrived to our destination, Animator's Palette. This is our third and final rotational dining venue. And as the name would suggest, it is all centered around art. You see the paintbrush and pencil handles on the door there, as well as on the compass rows on the floor here. So Animator's Palette, we've dined here several evenings as well. Again, it's all about the art of animation. It's about bringing characters to life. And that's going to do it for deck number three. We've reached the end. Animator's palette. That's it. So let's head up to deck four. Deck number four now. And as you can see, we are in the aft section of the ship. And what we're going to find here is Europa. That's the name for the adult district on board. Now, during the day, it will be open to all ages for different various activities and things like that. At night, it becomes the adult area. So you can see the different names of all the lounges and bars and clubs in this area, starting with the Tube. Now, as the name would suggest, Europa, it's based on Europe, it's European, and the Tube is like uh, the British, I guess you could say, subway system, like Metro, big bin right there, and we come in, and here we can see the venue. 
really cool theming in here. See, they even have like the subway handles and bars, the seating has like tickets and stuff printed on it. The carpet in here has the subway maps. And then one of my favorite features of this venue are these lights in the ceiling doing the red, white, and blue. I guess like the Union Jack, huh? They even have the phone booths over there on the stage. Really cool, lots of seating in here. They'll do dancing at night and kind of a club atmosphere. They do have the bar here in the center. And then like I mentioned during the day, they'll do various activities. All right, next up we have the Skyline Lounge. Now there is another entrance point on the other side, but you can also access it through the tube here. So you just kind of enter this little hallway, open up the door and head inside. So this is a really cool venue, as you can see, and you would expect in any lounge, there's plenty of seating, chairs, couches, tables to rest drinks on, and we have a bar over on the other side, and it kind of continues on around up into the uh, little nook there. So you see these panels here along the wall. These will actually illuminate at night, and it will play a live, not live, but like a dynamic moving footage of different skylines of different cities around the world. And it changes and it moves and you'll see cars driving by and things like that. And it will change from city to city as the night progresses. So they're not on right now, obviously, but they will kind of change and you can view that at night. It's a really cool feature. and makes this a really unique spot. So here is the aft elevator bay and the stairwell. Right over there is where we first went into the tube. I just wanted to point out Skyline Lounge, Skyline Lounge, you can go in right there as well instead of accessing it through the tube let's stick with the port side though we'll turn and head forward here now i do want to point out that you can go out here and you can actually do this i believe on both sides port and starboard but this would be kind of like your walking deck or your running track um outdoor lounge space this is where the lifeboats are stored. You have like shuffleboard out here, things of that nature. And I'm pretty sure it goes around almost the entire deck. So I'm gonna point that out. Deck four is where you're gonna access this. Let's head back inside though and finish up with Europa. So again, turning forward from Skyline, we're here on the port side. Our next location, the lamppost and O'Gill's Pub. You see the shamrock there, the stained glass. So this, as the name would suggest, is an Irish themed pub. This is basically your sports bar on deck as well. Let's see if it's open. So here we are inside O'Gill's. And again, not currently operating. It is morning time, but it will be hopping later on. So you can see the dark woods, the low lighting, typical pub style, right? Got your bar right here in the middle. Plenty of high tops and seating around. Big screen TV over there, smaller screen TVs on the side. Again, this is a, basically the sports bar. So right across there is where we just came out of O'Gill's Pub. I want to turn back here. We're more on the starboard side again. Just wanted to show that there is this kind of seating area here. And they do have the signs pointing you out. If you make your way through this Tatooine-esque area, <laughs> you'll find some restrooms. And then it winds back to that main entrance of the tube that we went in earlier. Just to give you an idea of what's back here. But let's turn and head back forward. Again, we're on starboard side now. And we'll find Ooh La La. Ooh La La is basically like your champagne bar on board. Let's see if it's open. And it is open, obviously not operating. So yes, this is gonna be a little bit fancier, a little bit more glitz and glam, I would say, than some other locations, but typical of a champagne bar, right? So of course in the evening, have some champagne or any other drinks, listen to some live music, relax. During the day, they'll do a lot of beverage seminars in here or different tastings, wine tasting, champagne tasting. And this is going to drop us into La Piazza, as the sign says there. See, there is a piano, so we'll have live music at times. This is kind of like the centralized location of Europa. I love what is it? looks like a carousel. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going for here, which is super cool. And it has like the jewels and gemstones up above. I love these round booths that they have along the perimeter. And I really love the Vespa with the sidecar that they have over here. All the lights. 
It's a great spot. You see the bar is centrally located, and it's because when you come in, that's the main entrance to the Europa section. So this is kind of the first thing that you see, and then you can branch off. You can go to Ogil's Pub over there. You can go to Ulala over there, or you can head back to the tube and skyline through there. So this is kind of the main landing area of Europa. Uh, now we've seen all the various establishments and venues inside Europa. You see the names on the wall there? They should all sound familiar. We've checked them all off. So now we're gonna exit the Europa area and we're on the port side now. We're gonna turn and head forward and show you the rest of deck four. So deck four port side, you can see Europa right back there. And what we find next is the D lounge. The D lounge is the family lounge and gaming space on board. They will have all kinds of activities in here. You can see today's activities. Ooh, story time with Mrs. Claus. We did that the other day, it was super fun. Yes, bingo is in here, trivia is in here, pirate, tri uh, pirate game show is in here. All kinds of stuff going on inside the D lounge. I love the handles. Of course, I don't know if this is open. Oh, it is. Okay, take a quick look around. So I love the, the visual screens all the way around the back wall. They do have a sound booth here where they control stuff. I think they have a bar in the backstage area so you can order drinks in here. I've seen people having drinks delivered. But as you can see, lots of seating in here. There's usually even more, but they've spaced it out due to COVID. And then you have our main stage up there at the front where the production will take place. So it's a really cool space. Those digital display boards all around will do different things based on what the various activity is at that time. It's a really cool space. It's a really fun space. Great for the whole family. So just beyond the entrance to the D Lounge, again, heading forward here on the port side, we'll find Carriage Jewels. As the name would suggest, this is another jewelry store on board. It is quite large, continues all the way across there. In fact, if we come out here, like we're gonna go into the atrium. Da, 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 da. Now we're in the middle section of the atrium, but I wanted to show that there's another entrance to carriage jewels on this side. So yeah, go in there, get all your jewelry. And now it's backtrack, so we just passed something pretty important over here on the port side. And that important thing we passed is Shutters, the onboard photo gallery. And uh, they, I wanna point out, they do sell uh, camera equipment here, uh, picture frames, electronics, plugs, and binoculars. You can purchase uh, from the stuff right there. Now, they have gone to digital in, in Shutters. I remember when I first started selling with Disney Cruise Line as a teenager, they printed out all the photos and put them on shelves. Everything's digital now, so you come up, tap your key to the world card right there and your photos will come up you can look at them purchase them if you need assistance they do have a desk here in the middle and it continues on the length of the atrium here on the port side now let's turn and head over to the starboard side though something little tucked up in the corner so just behind our christmas tree we will find the vista cafe the name would suggest it's a cafe it's a small little area you can get uh specialty coffee drinks or things like that Ooh, holiday drinks pumpkin spice latte lots of fun stuff going on in here frappes looks like mocha iced tea different things going on in there those beverages are at an additional cost and they will sometimes also have some small food offerings here in the glass the display case so you sit down at the table, enjoy the view out of the big porthole windows, and you do have this comfortable seating that continues on most of the span of the atrium here on the starboard side. Couches, chairs, things like that. Take in the view of the ocean, take in the view of the atrium. Now let's continue forward. There's two other things to show right up here. So again, starboard side heading forward just past the main part of the atrium, we will find the Disney Vacation Club desk. So you can speak to the Disney Vacation Club assistants here. They can give you information about the club, if you're interested in joining, adding on points, things like that. Uh, Disney Vacation Club can be used towards Disney Cruise Line, although that may not be advisable. You wanna speak to them about that and all the different ways you can use it, but they do have several help desks here available for you should you need those now wanted to point out here you see the interactive art you will find this all throughout the ship it looks like a standard painting when you first walk up but then it does magical things also these little magnifying glass on the floor that is for the midship detective agency that we talked about earlier so you come up here with your interactive card and that's how you'll play the game 
Now as we exit the midship part of deck four and head to the forward, a couple of important things to show up there, but I did want to stop and point out, um, the map says connect at sea right next to the Disney Vacation Club area. I haven't seen anyone there talking about that, but maybe they usually would have someone there. But what I actually wanted to point out is the jogging track that we went outside and looked at. So you can see it comes all the way here, around, and then to the forward. So it doesn't go out to the point, but um, you can go around most of the deck there. Um, I think the map's a little outdated too because it says Tiffany, which is not anymore, it's Carriage Jewels. So there you have that. What we're going to do now is cut over to the port side and then head forward. On the port side of deck four now, heading forward, we will find the Buena Vista Theater. This is an actual movie theater on board, like full size, legit, playing first run films. See right now, so it's uh, today is December 3rd, I believe, yes. And we're getting things like Encanto, Noel, which is not new, but it's a very merry time cruise. Eternals, Jungle Cruise. So some definitely some newer offerings from Disney. And you can see those in their full production. Again, it's a full-size theater. Do want to point out they do have the snack bar here, just like we saw at the Walt Disney Theater. You can see the popcorn machine there. They usually have candy and drinks. Again, not right now because of COVID, unfortunately. But hopefully that hopefully that will return soon. I don't know if the theater is open. Let me check. Okay, so the theater was open. I was able to come in. There's our curtain. They will also do some live presentations and shows in here as well, um, but it's mostly the movie theater. So the screen is behind the curtain there. And as you can see, it is a full size theater. Super nice. Love the way they've stylized it in here. Really great place to take in a film. As we exit the Buena Vista Theater and continue forward here, Again, on deck four, come all the way forward here, and we will find our upper entrance to the Walt Disney Theater with the balcony seating. And you can also head outside here for the jogging track and go along the deck, should you choose. And with that, I think we've completed deck number four. Let's head up to deck five. Deck five forward is where we find ourselves right now. And what you can consider deck five is basically the kids' deck because we see its staterooms in the back. Then we have the Oceaneers Lab, the Oceaneers Club, the Small World Nursery, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, all of that, and then Vibe, which is like the, uh, I believe the teens area on board at the front. So it's essentially, other than the upper level of the Buena Vista Theater and the Port of Ventures desk, we'll get to all that in just a minute, this is essentially the kids' deck. Now, as for Vibe, I don't know if we'll be able to go in there because it is a teen space, you know. We have to be very respectful of, of uh, children's areas. We already filmed the Oceaneer Club and Lab when they had an open house on day one, so we'll show that in just a minute. I'm gonna head forward here and see if we can get into Vibe. Okay, I came all the way forward and I think I'm gonna have to find another area for the actual main entrance to Vibe, but I did wanna point out that there is a wheelchair accessible entrance to Vibe right here. This is on the port side all the way forward of deck five. Okay, back outside and actually back on deck four. I think Disney's trying to trick us here. I see the sign here that says entrance to vibe is actually outside here on deck four. Um, the map on deck five said that the entrance was on deck four. And I'm like, but the theater's on deck four. So I came out and sure enough, out here. So I guess we need to head up the jogging track to the very forward part of the ship for the actual entrance. But once again, that wheelchair accessible entrance was available on deck five. Aha, so here we are. This is the very forward part of the jogging track on deck four. So now we're a bit on the port side and you see the sign here says vibe and it is a stairwell, hence the accessible entrance on deck five. So let's head up here. And here's the landing spot for vibe. Unfortunately, the big door is closed right now. So, I do want to point out they have the operating hours here, open for teams. Okay, let's head back and finish up our Deck 5 tour. Back inside on Deck 5 proper now, and I want to point out, you can see kind of the outline of Vibe and the outdoor space that they have. So we're here at the forward elevators and stairs. We're gonna go out to the port side and walk back. So let's do that now. So we just came around the corner there and we will find the upper entrance and exit to the Buena Vista Theater. As we saw just a minute ago, it is two decks tall. So you could get it, get in or out from this deck. Although currently they're asking you to only use the deck for entrance because they have one door for entrance, one door 
for exit. Now, let's turn. We're going to continue heading aft. Proceeding along deck five, port side, we'll find our midship elevators and stairs right there. If we continue here, we'll be on the upper level of the atrium, so you can get a nice view from up here of the beautiful atrium. Right now, the Christmas and holiday decorations, there's character greetings on going on in here. You'll be able to see all of those from up here. But if we turn around, we'll find the Port Adventures Desk. So the Port Adventures Desk, of course, is going to help you get those shore excursions booked. They like to call them Port Adventures because that's more fun. And I love the little maps that they have with the characters that represent their areas. I hadn't noticed that before. Check that out. Now, right next to the Port Adventures Desk, we will find the other Midship Detective Agency uh, kiosk. And it's the same thing we saw on Deck 2. You see the sign there? The other location on Deck 2 Midship, remember, by Enchanted Garden. So it's the same thing. Grab a pencil, grab a map, grab an interactive card, touch the screen to begin, and you can become your own Sherlock Mouse. So now we're going to walk around kind of the back side of the atrium here on Deck 5, and you'll start seeing some artwork. We have the Blue Fairy, the Fairies from Sleeping Beauty, Tinkerbell, the other fairies from Pixie Hollow, Fairy Godmother, and it's giving you a little preview of what you're about to see, which is the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. So the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, for those who don't know, is an area you can bring your children, they can pick out an outfit, they have all kinds of accessories, bows, things like that. Like they have prince outfits, they have sailor outfits, sometimes I think they'll have pirate outfits. You see all the different things right there. But they will do their hair, they might do a little bit of makeup, glitter in their hair, make them look really, really special, help them make them feel like a princess or a prince or the captain or whatever it is that they're going for. So it's a really fun experience. Let's take a look inside this door here which is the exit just to kind of get another idea so you can see the treatment chairs over here on this side where they will actually do all that now this is an additional cost but it's a really cool offering to have on board it's a really great idea to do if you're gonna have special photos taken on board so Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is starboard side deck 5 midship you can see there we're gonna head back over to the port side though we're gonna cut through back on the atrium past the port adventures desk and past the midship detective agency desk we're going to continue aft with the rest of deck five and we see our sign here youth activities check in only one adult per party please because we are headed into the kids area now first thing we'll find here is the it's a small world nursery which we're not going to go in because we wouldn't do that anyways we don't want to disturb anyone but actually as you see the venue is closed i don't believe they're offering the nursery right now during COVID protocols. At least anytime we've been by here, it says closed and it doesn't say like when they're gonna be open. I don't think they're doing that right now, but that is an option normally. Continue aft here and we will find the Oceaneers Club and Oceaneers Lounge. They have the big doors pulled down here, so you can't really see it right now, but that's what the sign says. The good news is that, as I mentioned earlier, we came and checked out the Oceaneers Club and the Oceaneers Lounge on boarding day. They always have a nice big open house. And actually, they've been doing an open house every day in the morning. So not just the kids, but everyone can come in and see some different things here on deck five. And it's a super cool, super cool space. So I wanna come down here, kinda show you this cool sign, Oceaneer Lab. Just to give you an idea where the entrances are so the lab is further back the club is further forward but they are connected inside so we'll go ahead and roll that footage now where we gave the tour on day one so right when you come in the oceaneers club they do have these cool hand washing stations you just put your hands right inside of it automatically washes them and then dry with the paper towel and you're good to enter you go to all these different themed areas like pirates cove looks like just a little hangout spot there with the maps and the barrels lots of fun stuff then over here I have this curtained off screen right now just showing some nautical pirate map kind of things like that a lot of fun stuff probably do different shows or different activities on that screen at various times here is the sign says the craft studio this is really nice so obviously they have the table and stools in the middle here do arts and crafts make different kind of things drawings all that kind of stuff you'd expect and then here in the middle is like the video areas so they got these fun little seats on the floor and then they have all these screens up along the wall showing whatever film or show they're showing at that time and they also have some of the interactive art in here as well 
and in the middle of the space they have these interactive play tables like air hockey that's super fun they have like a big dance floor in the middle here too they have interactive it does different things they have different parties or activities going on on this floor as well and on the other side they have the media lounge which has a comfortable chair like a big bean bag on the floor and a tv showing the movie and here in the middle we have the explorer's room this is really cool this is an interactive experience where you can actually pilot a ship so you have the throttle here on the right you have the wheel to spin and you can move the ship around and do different things with the buttons to get the different views things like that and it's all nautical themed which is super cool this is a really fun experience also wanted to point out that the holiday decor continues in the oceaneers club and next to the explorers room we have the animator studio this is really really cool you can see it's themed out the different paints and stuff they have a big drawing table in the middle but then you have these like interactive virtual drawing boards here that you can do different activities on i think you can learn how to draw different characters do like a coloring kind of thing and i love all these like little statues up above super fun Ooh, zerg <laughs> i get some maquettes here i really like that because it teaches the kids like you know how art is made and the different things that go into animation which is very fun so here in the back of the club again again this is the big media area where they have all the tvs up you can then go into the oceaneers lab and this is where they'll do different kind of activities they have the holiday decor up in here as well but different activities like different science experiments might make different things like goos or sticky things or different kind of stuff like that a lot of group activities in here and it just continues on back and then once you pass through that area, we find another hand washing station and a bathroom area. I'm not going to show in there for obvious reasons. And this is where the really, really cool stuff <laughs> begins. So starting right when we come in with the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, of course, you can go to all these different little stations, hit the buttons, hit the controls. It's like you're piloting the Millennium Falcon. Look at the holographic stuff going on. We got R2-D2 up on the screen. Lots of cool stuff in here. And it's just themed all throughout. You'll see like the different canisters and different buttons, different screens. They got like the cables up on the wall running through. I mean, it looks like you're in the ship, which is super, super cool. Official name for the Millennium Falcon area is the Star Wars Command Post. Just past the Millennium Falcon area, we enter like the Pixie Hollow area. So there's a big mirror over there, but it's of course based off of Tinkerbell and the fairies. You can see them lighting up in there. This is just like a fun little play area, a little seat area, like the little toadstool seats. Also a bench built in right there. Holiday decor continuing throughout. And of course they're showing movies all throughout the kids club area here. So you can see Moana's on the screen right now. I love the theming though. The lights coming on and off, the fairies hidden throughout, little sights and sounds, little things happening here and there. A lot of attention to detail in this room. It's very nice, very nice. And I really like this tree. Very colorful and festive. Kind of in the middle hub area, I wanted to point out that they have this area off to the side which has this big curtain across it. It looks like there is a screen back there. Maybe normally they would do some kind of show or something like that. Next to this picture of Buzz Lightyear on the right and Stitch on the left. But currently curtained off so nothing going on in there right now. And in the middle they have an interactive floor. You can see they're trying to jump over the laser beams there. Super cool. Let's enter our next themed area, the Marvel Superhero Academy. This is super, super cool. So of course the world of Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe, all your favorite superheroes, the Avengers, different things like that going on here. I love all the, again, attention to detail. Just these little knickknacks that have no purpose other than to provide theming, which is fantastic. Looks like we have some interactive experience here. Doctor Strange, Dark Dimension Defense. You can see it's kind of like a motion sensor there. So it's an interactive game. And then here in the middle, I really like all this stuff. It's like uh, memorabilia and things. Got Ant-Man's mask there. Got T'Challa, Black Panther's mask here. Look at that. Is that like, it's almost like the Tesseract or something. Glowing like that. That's super cool. Look at these. I like these windows. It's like different, what are these like different portals? It's like different worlds. It's like Doctor Strange. Like you can, like, oh, I'm gonna send you to somewhere else here. <laughs> Maybe it changes. If you do it, oh yeah, there we go. How about that? And look, they have all the books from Doctor Strange. 
like with the chains on them, just like in the movie. That is so, so awesome. Being that I'm a big Toy Story fan, let's head into probably my favorite area, Andy's room. Oh my gosh, first of all, RC racer right here. They can get inside, take a picture, pretend like they're driving RC around, which is fantastic. We've got a big slinky dog bench right there they can sit on, watch whatever movie's playing. We have the blocks, we have barrel monkeys, giant ham, giant Mr. Potato Head. Oh, I love the Mickey watch on the wall. That's so cool. Of course, Andy's famous wallpaper right up here. They're even down on the floor in the carpet, Woody's Roundup. Oh, look, they can draw and stuff. Draw things and like rip it off from the top. That's very fun. I love the Buzz Lightyear poster. It's like a movie poster. That's so cool. Rex popping through the cardboard box. Oh, he's popping out of the jail. Look, his tail's up there. That's so fantastic. This looks like some more interactive art right here. You'll see that all throughout the ship once again. It looks like they got a toy box there. Gotta have toys, right, for Toy Story. Andy's room. And I love that the Christmas decor is continuing in here as well. Or holiday decor, of course. And here's a really good look at the interactive video board, or dance floor kind of thing, in the center. Uh, you see they're jumping around, they're shooting, what are they, frogs? They're shooting their tongues out, trying to eat all the bugs, score as many points as they can. That is so cool, right here in the middle of the room. Oh, one quick correction before I leave. I said that this was the club, and then when you came into like where the tables are, that was the lab. Actually, those parts, the tables are the lab, but this whole part that where we began is the lab as well. Then the part we went over to with the Millennium Falcon and Marvel and all that, that was the actual club, but they are connected. So there you have it. That's the Oceaneer Club and Oceaneer Lab. One small thing, literally, that I wanted to show here. A lot of people don't know about this. This is Pepe, the King Prawn from Muppets. This is his stateroom. Look, it's it's number 5148 and a half because it's such a smaller door. So just tucked in here next to the entrance of the Oceaneers Lab. That's a lot of fun. And with that, we have completed deck number five. Let's head up to deck number six. All right, and as our map shows us here, deck number six is all staterooms. Nothing to show, let's head up to seven. Deck number seven, once again, all staterooms. Nothing to show here either. Let's head up to eight. Crazy old Maurice. No, crazy eight. <laughs> Deck number eight, where we find ourselves now. But yet again, tic-tac-toe, it's three in a row. Nothing to show here but staterooms. Let's go to nine. We're feeling fine on deck number nine, but there's nothing to show here either. All staterooms continuing to 10. And deck number 10, as you can see, is all staterooms as well. But that's our last deck that's going to be like that. Let's head up to deck 11 where the fun begins. All right, deck 11 aft is where we find ourselves right now. And you see the theming is a little bit different. Nigel, what are you doing here? Well, what Nigel's doing here and what you'll be doing here is coming to Cabana's, which is the buffet on board. It's really great. They have a lot of great, big, great selection. Lots of space to seat inside and uh, get your buffet fix on. Hand washing stations here and on the other side as well. So you can enter from port side, you can enter from starboard side inside Cabana's. Uh, one of my favorite things inside Cabana's are the sand castles from the different Disney park areas. Disneyland Paris, Disneyland in Anaheim, Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom in Lake Buena Vista, Tokyo Disneyland, and then Hong Kong, although it doesn't look like that anymore. That's a little outdated. But as we'll continue around here, it's what you would typically expect from a buffet area, right? Lots of tables, lots of chairs, lots of places to sit that have the food selections here. They are currently serving you and they are not currently open for dinner, COVID protocols. So breakfast and lunch as of right now, normally they would be open for dinner as well. But the seating just continues all the way around. Food continues all the way around. And if you'd like to see what they might have for food for breakfast or lunch, be sure to go back and check out our daily vlogs. One thing I wanted to point out here, all the way in the aft section of the ship, they do have an outdoor seating section. Get that beautiful wake view and uh, really enjoy yourself. Have that outdoor dining, alfresco dining, if you so choose. But you can also head forward and they'll have drink stations. They're getting you the drinks, they'll get you the food. It's a very big venue, but it's a very nice venue. Venue. It's themed immaculately. You even have the clocks here that show the different times of the different Disney park locations around the world and this lovely tile mosaic of Finding Nemo 
that'll be the theme throughout, right? It's cabanas, so beachside, tropical, you have the wood, driftwood, you have the uh, the thatch roof, you have the mine, 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 seagulls from Finding Nemo. Lots of great stuff in here, inside cabanas. All right, so we're in the starboard side of cabanas right now. Before we exit, I wanted to point out that there is a doorway in here to Sweet On You, but let's head outside and show the main entrance. So here is Sweet On You. This is an additional cost venue, but it is well worth it in our opinion. They have specialty flavored ice creams and gelatos. They also do baked goods, like they have holiday cupcakes and stuff right now. They also have prepackaged candy and popcorn inside, much like you would find in the Disney theme parks. And we love the theming inside as well. See Mickey and Minnie there, bit of a glare. Sorry about that, there we go. So just past Sweet On You and the entrance to Cabanas. Again, we're on the starboard side here, deck 11. We will start entering the pool deck area. So all throughout the pool deck, I'm not gonna keep pointing it out, but you'll see tables and chairs everywhere all around the pool deck. What we'll point out here on our left, kind of in the middle section of the pool deck is Nemo's Reef. Now this is a water splash play area for the little ones. So they can go in here, there's all kinds of jets and sprayers. Of course, the characters from Finding Nemo. <laughs> Got Squirt back there, Pufferfish, Dory, Marlin. Nemo's hiding somewhere. You gotta find them, right? That's the rules. So you see Nemo's Reef here. They have the hours posted. And this is for use of children up to the age of eight years old, but they must be supervised. Oh, there is Nemo. He's hiding in the anemone. Um, one of my favorite features is the slide in the back, Mr. Ray. Uh, they can go up the stairs there and slide down. So again, it's not currently open, but normally there's water bubbling and spraying and going all around here in Nemo's Reef. Now, if we come over to the port side, again, tables and chairs everywhere. So just keep that in mind. You'll find another entrance slash exit to Cabanas. So continuing forward here on the port side of the pool deck, we will come up the ramp. They also have stairs to our main pool area. Now you might be saying, where's the pool? It's actually right in front of us and there's actually two of them. So Donald's pool and Mickey's pool are both here. But Disney Cruise Line was so smart that they came up with this idea where they could have these movable floors so they could cover up the whole space. When they have a deck party, when they have fireworks at night, when they do different activities, they will cover it up as you see here and put these chairs out. During the day, they'll move the chairs, they'll open these things up and you'll have the pools here. And you'll also see funnel vision. That's what they call their big screen because it's up on the funnel. One other thing to point out, we see again, Nemo's Reef back there right next to that we do have the giant mickey slide with the uh, mickey hand holding it up there which is super cool splash down over on the other side you can also grab some life jackets there as we continue along the pool deck here just want to kind of give you an overarching view so both sides again those tables and chairs they're going to be everywhere but you do have a, a beverage station so soda is complimentary with disney cruise line inside the restaurants or up on the pool deck so you see right over there as well as right here you have those beverage stations where they will serve you they have coke products so coke sprite diet coke that sort of thing ginger ale they'll also sometimes have juice or coffee things like that that you can grab from the beverage stations either port or starboard side your lounge chairs are going to continue around the pool deck on both sides as well now let's continue heading forward and really quick here's a better look at the beverage station this side is hot so they have like coffee and tea and things like that and then this side is like more of the soda station so coke sprite minute made lemonade light and then they have vitamin water uh standard tap water fuse iced tea i believe that's unsweet diet coke and then another coke so they will serve you here at the beverage station now let's head forward here again deck 11 we're on the port side did want to point out that they do have bars on both sides as well so you'll find this on the starboard side and uh, get your alcoholic drinks there whenever they are open so the next thing we're going to find here on deck 11 is ice cream <laughs> mike wazowski so this is complimentary ice cream this is included with your cruise fare not an additional cost like sweet on you is this is soft serve so when we came the other day, they had vanilla, chocolate, and then the swirl. They also had strawberry and banana, and then you could swirl that as well. Now next door to that, we will have frozen treats. These are gonna be things like smoothies or like 
frozen beverages and they also do sell some alcoholic drinks in here these are an additional cost i believe the smoothies were five dollars and 25 cents so you can get those at frozen treats now we could continue heading forward into the quiet cove adult area but i'm actually going to cut back and go across to the starboard side because of something we need to show you over there very important okay on the starboard side now but actually heading aft really quick as i mentioned it's almost like a mirror image right so here's the soda station the hot beverage station one thing that is different from the other side though is right here you do have like a small uh, it says pool but it's really cool because it goes right up to the uh to the side of the ship there and in fact this is super cool there's glass panels in the bottom so you can actually look down at the ocean below you while you relax okay let's turn and head forward so just past our pool area and our funnel vision we'll turn and head forward here on the starboard side of deck 11 and what we will find is flo's v8 cafe this is like a grab and go quick serve location right so you had the buffet in the back of cabanas you have your main dining rooms and things like that but here you have a grab and go section from the different areas so you have luigi's pizza tomato grill and then Fillmore's favorite. So Fillmore's gonna have things that are a little bit healthier. Fruit, salad, sandwiches, paninis, wraps, things like that. Tomater's Grill has burgers, cheeseburgers, turkey burgers, veggie burgers, uh, grilled chicken, hot dogs, bratwurst, and then Chelsea's favorite, chicken tenders and fries. And then of course Luigi's Pizza has pizza, uh, different flavors. They will have a vegetarian special of the day. They also have a daily special that's not vegetarian. And they always have pepperoni, mozzarella cheese and chicken and barbecue now the thing is the way they're currently doing this is that you'll actually enter the stanchion to queue here wrap around there will be an attendant here who will then direct you to one of the windows there's four windows even though there's three locations but no matter which window you go to you can order from the other ones as long as they're open all right so we popped inside here on deck 11 there is one small thing to show uh, between flows and ice cream here is who's it's and what's it's They've got who's it's and what's it's galore. I don't know if they have thingamabobs though. <laughs> but you can come in here, just a small shop. Uh, as you can see, they have like swim shirts, swimwear. They do have some like hats and mugs and water shoes, little swim diapers and sunscreen and things like that inside who's it's and what's it's. Okay, now we'll head back outside here, past flows, and we will exit the radiator springs area and forward and as our sign says on our divider here this area is reserved for guests 18 and older this is the adults only area on board basically called the quiet cove area so right when we come in we're gonna find lots of lounge chairs in here couches things like that we have a bar over here on the starboard side and it does have a kind of like a solo bar because you have a uh, stools there in the water you see our pool here Got some benches you can sit in and then the deeper sections over on that side over on the port side you will find some more uh, lounge chairs and there is a hot tub spa area over there as well you do have some freshwater showers towards the very front section of this area and then the lounge chairs couches continue all around you even have some day beds over here and then this just goes back out to ice cream and frozen streets and you can see the hot tub right there right up against the glass now this one's different than the one we saw back on the pool deck it does have the uh, glass panels in there though so that's cool this one is a bit deeper though and you get the nice view of the panoramic windows but now let's turn back and we will find cove cafe so this is one of our favorite venues on board even though we don't drink coffee let's head inside and take a look we enter the cove cafe so they're going to have coffee in here specialty coffee drinks all available for an additional cost and they also have some uh, pastries in here you can get as well including some holiday treats right now which is super awesome and it smells fantastic in here they have big porthole windows all the way around they even have holiday decorations up in here as well but what we like about this spot even though we don't drink coffee is the smell because coffee does smell good even though we don't drink it but we love the artwork in here lots of old pictures of walt lillian the whole disney family throughout history and developing things and their travels it's a really really nice spot all right so we've come inside here at the quiet pool right there and the coke cafe right across we've come inside again this is all the way forward here 
on deck number 11 because we do have something lovely to show you here which is the census spa and salon area which we can find here on the starboard side see the sign there census spa and salon and we'll head right in and we'll find the main check-in desk area so right, right when we enter off to the right we do have the beauty salon and barber shop so of course this is where you can get your hair cut or trim get a shave get manicures pedicures different nails treatments things like that inside there and then they do have this nice seating area here looks like they sometimes have some different snack or drink offerings not anything right now and then there's another entrance to the fitness center we'll show you the main entrance in just a second but we do have these floor to ceiling windows here which is very nice but just past the desk area we'll continue forward we can go right into the fitness center or we can go left to go down the hallway which also has an entrance to the fitness center as you can see the sign here pointing out everything so let's head that way and right when we come down the hallway we'll find the fitness center of course this is where you can come in get your workout on they have different resistance machines they have treadmills you know ellipticals scale if you need to weigh yourself they do have a water fountain as well as a water bottle fill they have towels over on this side and everything's pointed out towards the ocean those floor to ceiling windows over there so you can get that fantastic view they also do have some benches here dumbbells and free weights kettlebells exercise balls and things like that here across from the fitness center we'll find the chill spa i don't believe this is actually open right now but as it says here reserved exclusively for guests aged 13 through 17 years so teenage spa right here you can see actually the sign says chill youth spa chill spa right inside there as we continue on through the sense of spa salon we'll find the rainforest room this is the thermal suite area so now inside the rainforest area of the senses spa and salon this is going to be basically your thermal suite so when we come in first thing you're going to find on the right is towels or i should say are towels robes and slippers a clock keep track of the time up on the wall and we have some water here ice water and lemon water as well and of course a place to discard towels and robes as well as trash do have some built-in seating here as well as some storage cubbies over here on the side put all your different things in did want to point out the ceiling in here you got the uh, sky effect and like the different like fiber optic lights coming in like stars which is really cool so as we proceed forward we're going to find our different showers now based on whichever shower you enter you're going to have a different experience different water temperature water pressure light sound smells things like that so you do have tropical thunder water fun and rainforest and then over on this side we do have the cool mist experience so again different things depending on which one you go in do have some uh, hanging pegs here if you want to hang up your robe or towel or something like that and then we have our different rooms so we have the hammam room this is the one that they recommend if you get an exfoliant scrub which is an additional cost you can use that inside of that room next to that we do have the caldarium room which i believe is like your standard steam room if i'm not mistaken i'm <laughs> not totally up to speed on all the spa terminology but i'm getting there and then next to that we have the laconium room i do believe that is the dry sauna just past the shower area and the storage cubbies we go through this door and we will find our next little room which is actually not so little and these are heated chairs that you can lounge in they do have the built-in comfortable headrests as you can see as well as the reading lights and you have 10 of those chairs again these are fully heated the whole surface is heated for your enjoyment now you can come through these doors here by hitting this button doors will open up and you enter this space which is open air so you see the the windows floor to ceiling but the middle part is completely open there's no glass there so it's open air and this is where you're going to find the two jacuzzi hot tubs one on your left and one on your right so you're getting that fresh ocean breeze coming through got the jacuzzis nice music playing very light very lightly you have that uh beautiful view outside you can even see the bridge up ahead so we are on the starboard side of the ship here and depending on the time of day could be getting a nice sunny day could be getting a sunset you could be maybe even getting some starlight just depends 
And across from the rainforest area, we do have a men's changing room and restroom, as well as a women's changing room and restroom. But currently, they are only restrooms because of COVID protocol. They don't have the changing room areas open, but you normally would find those in there. If we continue on back here, got a stairway up to some treatment rooms there. Waiting area, I believe they have that you can utilize at different times. Hello. Hi. And they have other treatment rooms available. They just continue on Hello. all the way back through here and continue wrapping around. So you see many, many, many treatment rooms in here. So there you have it. That's the sense of spa and salon. We were a big fan of that. As you can see, the rest is just state rooms. So that is going to do it for deck 11. Let's go up to 12. All right, deck 12 midship is where we find ourselves right now. So deck 12 is kind of an interesting deck because it's split between inside and outside and it's not consistent all the way across because it you know cuts down into the main pool area down on deck 11. So there's only a couple things to show here in the forward and midship parts of deck 12. One is the spa upper level, which we've already seen the spa. We do have the concierge lounge, which we don't have access to, but we can show you where it's at. So let's head there right now. So we just come inside here on deck 12 in the outer deck area. And of course we are forward right now. And as the sign says, here is the concierge lounge. And they do have some information up on the uh, display board so again we don't have access to it so we can't go in but i will try to show you there we go a look inside there so the concierge team can assist you with anything you need they do have sodas inside they do have special coffee drinks that they can make from the machine there and uh, you can get little snacks i think inside there's a lounge area so we did this on the uh, disney dream when we got engaged and we really enjoyed it so that's where you'll find the concierge lounge should that apply to you and i wanted to come down the hall on the starboard side here to show you that it is different it looks completely different than other hallways and uh starfish remember what we talked about earlier so it's a little bit different than the seahorse it still begins with s and actually has the word star in it so that helps but i really wanted to show that there's another entrance to the concierge lounge here on the starboard side so you can look inside so they have the attendant there they have different pastries and things juice get those special coffee drinks and they even have some uh decor up inside too lots of lounge space things like that so again this is the concierge area deck 12 forward i like the keys you got the key to the world when you concierge all right let's head back outside and head aft here on deck 12. outside on deck 12 now so right inside there is where we just were with the concierge lounge and we can look down to deck 11 in the quiet cool area but up here i did want to point out that we do have some lounge chairs and lounge space right next to the funnel and the small pool, which is appropriately named Funnel Puddle. So this is what Deck 12 is gonna look like, a lot of Deck 12 anyways. On both sides are the lounge chairs. This is kind of your sun deck, right? You're up above the pool deck here. You have an excellent view. You can see funnel vision, whatever's playing up there. And you're gonna lounge out in the sun or shade, depending on your, on your spot here. But as we continue forward, we will find one of our favorite features of the Disney fantasy as well as their sister the Disney dream and that is dun, 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 the aqueduct so the aqueduct is the water coaster on board and it is fantastic so you're gonna come here towards the middle oh a movie starting up on funnel vision <laughs> so right across from funnel vision you'll find the entrance here to the aqueduct you see the uh, information here you need to be at least 54 inches to ride by yourself i think that's the most important thing so it's either one person or two person in a tube you can ride together me and chelsea do it all the time go up the stairs here and you enter the funnel and that's where your ride will begin they'll load you up in the tube and get you on your way it's a really cool ride because you shoot out of the funnel right up there and you come into this clear acrylic tube section which goes out over the side of the ship so you'll be in clear see-through I don't know if it's I guess I said acrylic or glass whatever it is you can see right down to the water right down to the ocean and you curve around and then you're gonna that's where the fun really begins because you're gonna go down and up and down and up with the water blasters for the aqua coaster and you shoot through and it's a clear tube all the way and then you go inside that funnel come out on the other side and it's clear all the way down so you get a great view on that side as well just behind the back funnel here look at that beautiful 
we will find the Aqua Lab. This is like a, an interactive water play area. It's based on Huey, Dewey, Louie, uh, Donald's nephews, because of course we have the Aqua Duck. This is kind of continuing that story. And so this is, it's, it's turned off right now because it's early in the morning, but normally there would be water everywhere. These buckets would be spinning around. They'd be getting filled up and dumping on you. There'd be water spraying from all kinds of different areas. And you can see the theming here on the doors and on the barrels, like, just all over the place. It's really fun. It's kind of based on like a almost like a paint shop they have paint brushes you see the buckets but it's all water it's not colored or anything it's not going to stain you just regular water but it is going everywhere so if you come through this area you will get soaked and i mean it's probably more intended for kids and young ones but i think pretty much anyone could walk through and, and kind of rinse off here cool down and and just enjoy getting sprayed getting a little wet maybe right before you go on the uh, aqueduct or right after take a look at the uh the rules here pretty standard one small thing to point out here next to the aqua lab and it's kind of hidden except for this on the ground waves bar and then this small sign here waves and that is that there is a bar tucked up in here on the uh, port side of the ship so it's closed right now obviously i don't think they've actually had this open uh during the sailing but we haven't been here too much this is the crew area um it's a very small spot as you can see not too big but i think if it was open and operating you could just grab a quick drink there all right, we've come inside here, deck 12 aft, as you can see. And the reason I wanted to stop here at the map is because this is a little confusing. So you saw we, we did the concierge lounge, funnel puddle, came back by the funnel vision there, aqueduct, aqua lab. Now, we're gonna show this section here. I don't believe that you can just walk from deck 12 by the aqua lab into here. At least I couldn't, any way that I could see. I believe you have to either ascend or descend the stairs from deck 11 or deck 13 or use the aft elevators, which do come up right here. But either way, once you get here to deck 12 aft, you can proceed inside and you'll find this landing area. And this is gonna be our specialty dining area on board. But what we're gonna find around the corner here, oh, it actually says it here on the floor, Meridian. So this is a bar uh, lounge space here on the very back of the ship so you do have that lovely lovely wake view i love the uh globe map that they put on the glass doors you can head out a little bit of a sun deck spot out there in fact let's take a look at that so you see here you have some tables and chairs here on the outside i don't think many people know about this spot either so that's really handy and it's just really cool lounging i love how they did the straps and the buckles there and this is a spot that you'll come and relax at pretty much whenever you want, I suppose, but especially if you're going to have a specialty dining event. And that's gonna be at one of two restaurants. The first one is Paolo, which is the Italian restaurant on board. Now, Paolo is usually open for dinner every night, but it also has a brunch on sea days, which is exceedingly popular. We didn't get to do it, unfortunately. Let's take a quick look inside here. Love the artwork. Chandelier light will come in. And you see, very nice spot. Tables and chairs, of course. And they do have artwork throughout to remind you that it's Italian. And <laughs> you're supposed to be in Italy while you're dining. Venice canals and things like that. It continues on back into another section there. But you do have the floor to ceiling windows pretty much all the way around, which is really great. And then you can head out to that outdoor space as well. Now across from Paolo is Remy. And Remy like ratatouille right little chef remy here's our menu board and the illuminated sign remy is a french cuisine restaurant they have dinner every night as well they also do a brunch i believe they have a dessert uh offering as well remy has the doors closed let's see if we can get in so here is remy see they have the little carts that they can pull around they have uh, this is a smaller space than Paolo, but they do have, I think, like a chef's table area in the back there. Tables and chairs all along the windows as well with those floor to ceiling views and little hidden, hidden little chefs all throughout. You gotta look for the details. Of course, this spot is very popular. I think this maybe is actually kind of like the special chef's table area. I'm not sure, this might just be a regular spot that looks nicer. They have lots of wine in here, special bottles. <laughs> talk to the staff here because they have some really special things we've gotten the story of before you want to definitely inquire about that but yeah this is the french location on board so so here in remy and across at palo both an additional cost 
And with Palo, Remy, and Meridian taken care of, we have completed deck number 12. Let's head up to 13. 13 is definitely weird. Like I mentioned, 12 is split up, 13 is definitely split up. Just to give you a little sneak preview, we'll have the sports deck up here, but then that's it. So if we wanna to get to something here, like Edge, we have to go up there, or here at the four, we have to go up there. So we can't walk across. So we'll be doing some up and down here, but let's go, deck 13. All right, deck 13, and we're gonna start with the aft section. So this is a great showing of how this deck is broken up. We're gonna start here in the back with the sports deck. Let's head outside. All right, so up on deck 13 here aft, we're back outside and you see, so it says here, Goofy Sports, because this is Goofy Sports Court, part of the sports deck area here. So inside the court, we see we got these little mats here. Like I think they do some yoga classes maybe in the morning, but then beyond that, it's a full size basketball court. They might also put out some soccer nets from time to time, but mainly basketball here, and you do have a third rim as well in the middle. So the two at the ends to make it the full-size court, and then one in the middle there uh, looking at the, at the stack, at the funnel. Through the little uh, tarp there, we'll find the Goofy's Golf. So this is the miniature golf course on the ship. It has nine holes, and usually you would get... The gear here, the clubs and balls, but looks like they're not right here. Maybe on the other side. But uh, you start right here with the course, and you do have two options for each hole. So you got the hole information here on the sign. It tells you the hole number and the name and all that. But you have two options, as I was mentioning. Like You have Goofy and Max. So the smaller footprints are Max, and that's going to be a little bit of an easier route. So you can see, boom, right off the end of the baseball bat and in. Where Goofy's is going to be a little bit more challenging, so you can... Take your choice, whichever one you want to do, line it up and putt. It's as simple as that. And one other thing to point out here on the port side, right next to the end of hole eight, beginning of hole nine, is the Goofy Sports Simulators. Now, these are an additional cost. You can see the sign up there as well, but you would go inside of these doors here. And this is the sports simulator area. So, looks like this one has football, cricket um hockey wow that's really cool i didn't realize they had all those things so yeah it's, it's one of those things that it picks up your motion and picks up your play puts it up on the screen and i think this side is go oh no both sides do different things but this side they have all the golf clubs so they have actual clubs here ready for you to use tee off hit it into there so they have the two bays you can see all of the equipment that they have in here and it says guests ages 13 and under must be accompanied by an adult ages 14 through 17 must be accompanied by at least one other guest of the same age or older so they can't be by themselves and here some information on those digital simulators so basketball, baseball, hockey, football, or soccer, $13 for half an hour, $22 for the full hour. Golf simulator, $28 for half hour, $49 for the full hour. Reservations highly recommended can be made at the Port Adventures desk or directly at the simulators bought here during operating hours. So again, the sports simulator is right inside that door here at the end of the miniature golf course on the port side, deck 13 aft. And that will do it for deck 13 aft. It is just goofy sports deck here. So now we're gonna head and go to deck 13 midship. All right, here on deck 12 midship, because I needed to show you how to get to deck 13 midship, which is edge. Now I do believe one of the elevators will take you up there. Yes, so the uh, far ones will go up to 13. But if you wanna just take the stairs to edge, you can enter so here. So edge is like the tween space on board. I believe so you come ascend the stairs here and this is the spot for edge now unfortunately as you can see the venue is closed so we cannot go in right now and take a look but again I believe this is the tween space on board so you can see here all perfect that's what we need <laughs> we'll get the tour without even going in so you can see they have some fun games. Ooh, Wii Sports Resort. Uh, and different lounging areas, can watch movies in there together, do different activities, fun things like that inside of Edge, and they'll have the operating hours right there. Okay, deck 13 forward is where we find ourselves right now. You can see down below, it's a funnel puddle on 12, by Cove Pool down on 11. So right when we turn here, we will find the Currents Bar, currently closed, huh, fun. 
Of course, there's going to be lots of uh, tables and chairs, lounge space out here, as well as the bar stools right up at the bar. You get all your drinks here. And they usually do have live sports on the TVs here at the current bar, so just keep that in mind. All right, on the port side of the ship now, we will turn and head forward. Circle back in a minute and show you what's here on the right. But we're going to head forward right now into an adults-only area called Satellite Falls. So here is Satellite Falls, the name kind of obvious it's built right under the satellite here it's got a little waterfall it's not running too much right now but it's usually a little heavier later in the day but you can get right in it's a little wading pool it's got a bench seat built in and the water just drips down from under the satellite and you can just relax and chill out in the adults only area here and uh, cool off do have lots of lounge chairs available as well and i uh, got this partition to help block the wind because it's quite windy off the front of the ship but you can see straight out here. So now out in front of the partition in the open air, but you can look down to the very front of the ship. A lot of ships would have a helipad or something, but that is actually looking at Vibe, the teens only area. It has an outdoor space, and that is the outdoor space that you're seeing there. So it looks like they might have a little pool, hot tub area, some chairs, loungers, fun stuff like that. And so now I said I would circle back around and show you what was originally on the right now on my left we turn we will find the concierge uh sun deck it's like a sweet area sweet only area right concierge guests only as you can see there there's the sun deck hours we can peek through the porthole window here and see some lounge chairs with cushions and towels of course we'll go up above here though you can also see the access point there uh, some additional lounge and table space and it does look like they have a nice hot tub situated there all right, it was all broken up, but we saw the sports deck, we saw the entrance to Edge, and we saw Satellite Falls and the Concierge Sun Deck with Current, so that is going to do it for deck 13. Let's head up to our final deck, deck number 14. As you can see, there's nothing there at the front, nothing listed for deck 14 in the back. It's literally just gonna be right here at midship next to where we went up for Edge. So let's head back up there and we'll wrap up our tour. So again, back here on deck 12 midship. Remember our sign for edge? And they go through here to the staircase. Let's head up. And here is the entrance for edge, but we turn and find another staircase. We head up this one. And this is deck 14 in its entirety. So we turn here, we're gonna find two things. Number one, this one says Radio Studio. And then this is Outlook. So this is a nice little space here. See they have the booth seating over there, tables and chairs, plenty of chairs around. And they even have a piano in here. They usually use this for private functions, but you can see why it's called Outlook. It has a fantastic view out to the front of the ship. And just like that, we have completed Deck 14. All right, friends, that is going to do it for today's tour of the Disney Fantasy. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you found it informational, helpful, and useful. And once again, we'll remind you to check out our Disney Fantasy playlist on our YouTube channel. It has all kinds of daily vlogs in there, our room tour, and the ship tour as well. If you're interested in sailing on board the Disney Fantasy or another Disney Cruise Line vessel, we are authorized Disney travel agents. We'd love to help make that happen, so feel free to reach out via that travel agent information you can find in the description of this video. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you had a lot of fun, but we'll sign off for today. We'll see you next time. Happy holidays and happy travels.